time has come. We have stepped into Savage for the first time. Kind of. I have done a bit of Coil Savage, which was blind and all those kinds of things a little while ago and did a few bosses there. But this is like the one that people were excited for. And of course, with Ultimate on its way, maybe there's going to be an event for it. Maybe not. But it was a good way of, a good excuse, I should say, of finding your way to get into Eden Savage and clearing them all. And this all started because at the Race to World First in Cologne, and you'll notice by the roster we've got here, seven out of eight of the players in this roster were in the Race to World First. And we were all sat outside at this restaurant and we're all chatting and having a drink and it came up about the ultimate. We were like talking about it. And then everyone just started going, well, well Eden's just like... For me, for the for the, some of these people, it was, like, it was the best Savage race they ever did, or the Savage raid, the best Savage raid they ever did. It's like so good, and they're going like E6S, EAS is so amazing. This is great. E4S is so good, uh, and we were like, well, maybe we should do it, right? Is there a better way? We can all like, let's say there is an event, we can all research it and stuff, and it can do all that homework. But like playing it is just way better. Uh, and they were like, yeah, we should totally do that. We should totally do that. Snap to here, and we're there. We have a roster together. Zeppler was wonderful enough to join us as the eighth person who better to bring in uh, for a lot of fun, a lot of interest, and the player ability than Zeppler. More than that, we've got myself. We've got Alex, who's going to be raid leading us. We've got uh, Sinestra, Echo Production, Mitch, Echo Production. We've got the wonderful Jeeth Bell. We've got Nagura. We've got OK Mage. We've got this wonderful lineup, and I'm going to be playing Scholar. Uh, notorious is everyone, every time I play a healer, is like, we're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. So, <laughs> I did a bit more homework. I'm obviously playing with the level 80 abilities. I'm a bit more familiar with those than the newest ones at level 100. So, that's fine. And I'm being supported by world first healer, regular, and, uh, more consistent FF14 player than myself, Mr. Jeeth. Uh, so, on his white mage. So, we should be okay. And it turns out we were. We were fine. Uh, the healing was okay. It was actually really fun for me plotting out, like, okay, I need these here, these cool downs here so i can do this later and blah 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 um how was it all right so on our first raid we did e41 no e e1s I, i'm so bad with the ff14 nomenclature for their raids because obviously i'm so used to world of warcraft where it's like it's smolderon it's anserek it's tindril the name of the bosses doesn't work like that in ff14 uh so first boss savage e1s i believe is what it's called um this was really fine, actually. Eden Prime. Um, we're not doing it blind. We are uh, doing it appropriate item level and unsynced and things like that. But uh, we're, we're not doing it blind. Uh, purely because of time constraints, we're getting this roster, especially of streamers together, is really awkward and really hard. And we're here to learn and play through the fights and understand the mechanics, not like figure them out ourselves. So in the future, we might do some blind savage. But for this, it was a case of... <clears throat> We, would, we want to clear the bosses in a reasonable amount of time because we only have a limited amount of time to get everybody together over the next couple of weeks. This felt very much like an extreme, um, which was my feedback of it. I, I enjoyed it. There was some... There wasn't anything particularly complex here. We had to bait some orbs and make things spin around. But other than that, this was no different for me in terms of difficulty than what we've done certainly over the Endwalker and Dawn Trail extremes. I would argue they are actually more difficult than this. Uh, which was generally like the feedback from the audience was like, yeah, the first Savage boss is supposed to be a bit like an introduction, get your feet wet, you're now in, you're doing some stuff, you're collecting some gear, and it felt that way to me. I, I had a super amount of fun though, and it actually, in many ways for me, it put me at ease as to what was coming. It was like, oh, okay, we're, we're coping with this. I'm not like misplacing a deployment tactics or something and everybody's being eradicated. That's not happening. Uh, I did get to do a lot more healing than I thought I would do. Uh, it very much rem uh, dawned on me, like, healing in FF14 and why I find it so enjoyable compared to World of Warcraft is that the gameplay is really interesting during prog. I actually think if I was a consistent healer in FF14, then I'd probably find it less interesting because uh, certainly with the Scholar, which is the healer I've played by far the most of, if everything goes right and everyone does their job correctly, you barely do anything. You just spam DPS spells <laughs> because everybody's not taking excess damage. People aren't dying. You're not having to play catch up in any way, shape or form. And therefore the protections you put out, which are kind of on a scripted sort of play, all work. And then you just carry on and you game on forward. And that's nice during progress is to go from the chaos and nightmare that is trying to catch back up. Like somebody needs a res. You've got to get it back up. Now you need to heal a bit more. You've got to like 
the other healer's rezzing, so you need to pump out a lot more healing at that point, like raw HPS, which we're not great as as a scholar, uh, and like try and carry that raid for, a, a, you know, a 10, 15 seconds or something, and then carry them on. That stuff I really enjoy, while also planning out like, okay, next time, all I do is this, um, and if everything goes well, then we're going to be able to position a little better and be a bit more comfortable. So it was actually a really nice introductory fight. Uh, E2S uh, was where we got to with me. It turned out, just because the fates lined up this way, that I had to leave the raid two hours early. I was the dipper. I was the dipper this time. And it was really unavoidable. I had to take... My son's got... Um, had an, uh, an engagement that he had to go to, and my wife couldn't take him. So I had to leave two hours early. But we did get to the end of the fight while I was there, and we were... All, they killed it... Like, to tell you how close we were to killing it, they killed it three pulls after I left. Like, we basically killed it. I didn't get the kill annoying but we did everything to get to the end of the fight this was much more fun this was way more fun because when i was researching the fights and watching it nothing mechanically seemed very difficult it just seemed to all happen extremely quickly which meant that there was uh i, I wonder if this is going to be a, a, a trend going forwards in the more modern savage fights as i said i did coils in the past where it's like you if you screw this up and you're just like a little panicked and unsure, you're going to fail. It's about being comfortable. It's about knowing exactly what you're supposed to be doing because you can you can scrape by one of the things, but like the next two are just going to destroy you immediately if you're not exactly sure what's supposed to be going on. So you need to know that knowledge. Like they, it's almost like a test. Like have you figured this out rather than scraping by because you're not really going to scrape by in here. The DPS check is going to come into play uh, and you need to understand these mechanics completely and fully and comfortably which is perfect for why we're doing this absolutely perfect for why we're doing this and i had a lot of fun with this one i liked that it had three different mechanics that it could choose from it had some random elements it could go slicer uh into uh clock spots or it could go into guillotine or something like that or cleave yeah slicer cleaver or guillotine these might pull off in different ways the the boss has got nice clear animations of whether you run away from the hand or you go towards the hand or whether you use knockbacks uh the delayed mechanic which I think would have been much harder on us. Um, well, I know it would have been because they've introduced debuff timers because everybody apparently was using that mod is to like just track the debuff timers and this fight works on the idea of it'll give you a debuff, but it's going to go off much later. So it's like, hey, you have flare on you. It might not go off for like a minute, but in the game now you do have debuff timers, which makes this significantly easier because you can go, oh, okay, it's going off in 10 seconds. Now we need to move out. And now we, need, now we can see how all these mechanics resolve in a nice way. So that was very cool. Um, a lot of fun on this one. This is where we got to on day one. But this means, of course, if you're paying attention, that our next two bosses are Leviathan and Titan. And that's where we're up to. Uh, the guys did some pulls on Leviathan yesterday. They did a little bit of prog on it. So I'm going to play catch up on that. But then probably today, as I'm recording this, we are heading into Titan. And that makes me very excited. So I will update you with how that goes uh, tomorrow, hopefully, with Titan dead on the floor. We'll see. All right. But if you obviously want to check out this raid, uh, join us over on the live stream. Uh, and uh, we'll see you there. Bye, guys.